In this video, I'm going to show you how to assemble your automata box so that you can grab the crank, move it, and it moves and rotates all together with the square axle in the middle. So this is what we're going for. So let's get started. In your assembly, uh, once you have the box assembled, you might have more holes on the top of your box, depending on how many you might have. And you can always go back and change that by opening that part individually. You can even right click it, uh, right click the part over here and click open and we'll open in a new tab, the top. And you wanted to do that to make some changes. So I just put one circle in the center just for us for reference. So let's start dragging a few different parts in here. So I'm going to go to my standard parts here. One thing I'm going to bring in is the axle. I'm just going to drag and drop it. And we'll just kind of push it off to the side here. And then I have two axle bushings. There's one. And then a second one. So I'll move this one over here a little bit. And I can maybe rotate that if I'd like to. 90 or 180 degrees. And we'll put it right there. So I can do this of any sort of way. There's actually more than one way to do this. Uh, but uh, let's go ahead and here's the one that I found works and you can make it work as long as it's all rotating with with a revolute con uh, constraint or joint I should say you should be able to make this work so here we go I have this axle bushing and I will constrain it here so I'm going to select joint I'm going to move this around here and I'm going to select the center if I can't select the center because it's tough, I'm going to click this flat face first and then click the center. And we'll join that to the center of this one. Now, it went the wrong direction, so we'll come down here and flip the joint origin. And there we go. We'll click OK. And there it is. Now that is linked in together there. So that one is going to be put in in a little bit. The next one I'm going to do is take this one on the right side where the crank is going to go and I'm going to put that inside here by using the same joint so I'm going to select again the center of the axle bushing and the center of this right here and I'm going to make sure that flips around oops I'm going to uh, let, me, let me reselect the axle bushing again here I got to select the center from here this one that looks better so it's right in the center the reason I'm using the centers is because we had to line it up in case your dimensions are a little bit off for a clearance fit or interference fit the problem is it's a rigid joint so I'm going to change the motion to revolute and we want it to revolve just like that so it revolves in that direction you can hit animate to see it again and then I'll click OK let's go ahead and drag something else in um, if we scroll down and get to our crank, so here is the crank, and we'll drag that in, and I'm going to leave it right there, and um, you can always move it off to the side if you need to. I'm going to select another joint, and we will do the centers again, so the center of that, and this time it's not going to be revolute, we're going to make it rigid, and the next one will be the center of this, right there, and click OK. Jump back, and that one is on there now too. So you should be able to grab this now and turn it, and you'll, you'll notice actually the axle bushing is going to rotate along with it. It's tough to see, but it is rotating along with it. Now, if our axle is the correct size, this should be pretty simple to do. Our last joint that we have here is a, another rigid joint, and I'm going to join this center to the center here. But goes in the wrong direction, so I'll flip it and click OK. And there we go. So that is how we get it. So let's double check this is correct. And sure enough, everything spins together from the crank. So we can see it a little bit better. All right, now we'll keep going. Um, let's add something else in there. Let's add a follower guide circle, the eighth inch low profile one, it's a common one. We'll add that in there uh, and bring it up on the, near the top, maybe rotate it a little bit so we can get to where we need to be. I'll click OK. 
and we'll go ahead and put a joint on the center circle and then the underside of that low profile just like that so it sets it right inside there and this is also going to be a rigid joint something you'd probably glue in when you are finished it's probably an interference fit but we we'll, might still need to glue it in and then we will go ahead and put in a follower here's our eighth inch followers just a a wooden rod a dowel there pretty easy and I'll click OK and we'll do a similar joint I'm gonna join the center of this circle with the follower itself right so either side there we'll join that but it's not gonna be a rigid joint in this case it's gonna be a slider joint so we wanna make sure it slides along there like so and we'll click OK and then we'll double check that we got this working. Yep, and it slides up and down just like that. That's good. And now we're going to need some sort of roller on the bottom, whichever one we think is going to work the best. So let's go ahead and I'm going to find a roller. It's going to be an eighth inch one because that's the one we have there. And we're going to just use this one since we have it sitting there. The roller, eighth inch, flat bottom, square one. All right, a square that's flat bottom, but it's an eighth inch. And so I'll click OK, and we'll join that together. And so I'll join this center to the center right here. That looks like that circle is not the correct size. So I'm going to hit cancel here. Probably have the wrong, wrong save. Something that's not saved quite right. I'm going I'm to delete that one. Let's, let's see if we can find a different one. Let's see, I, here's another one that has an eighth inch circle. Let's try this one instead. Click OK, that one looks better. And we'll join that one. So same way we just did. We can always change the circle uh, size on something like that, but we'll go ahead and do this. We will select the center here. Now it puts it right on there. It's doing a slider joint, because that's what we did before. We're gonna do rigid instead. And put them in the position. I'm gonna move it up just a little bit here. Um, you know, because it's gonna go inside there a little bit. Maybe glue that in if we wanted to. Um, it looks like the roller's kind of in the right position there. Uh, if it needed to, you could always rotate it as well. And we'll click OK. Now, it still goes up and down. We just need to add our cam. So let's see here. We have a cam that we're gonna add now. So let's look for a cam that we might need. So I have a cam, but I think I have it saved in a different location, which is OK. We're going to go to a different location and go to cams. And I should have a parametric pair cam somewhere. There is the one I'm looking for. It's small enough. And I will insert that one in here and click OK. And we'll do very similar joints. Very easy to do. Click to center this one. And of course, the center here, a rigid joint. Uh, we could flip it if we want to. And then we are going to drag that straight over to the middle here and click OK. Come on back. We are ready to go, except for one more tangent relationship. We're going to add a tangent relationship to the bottom of the roller and to this face here. And now let's take a real quick peek here. We have our roller with a pair and it's going up and down just like we want. Everything's moving together. Now you can add or subtract things as you go, but we got the right idea of how to assemble our box together.